What's up YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a magnetic cursor that sticks to your different buttons and links across the site. Subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, and thank you so much to those of you who support this channel, allowing me to give away more content. So I wrote some code that we'll be able to use for this, and basically just copy it and go over to your project settings in the before body closing tag section. That's where we want to put the code. And for now, I'm just going to put it in the page settings closing body tag because I want to be able to see it and work with it. So we have a class of cursor and that's what it's looking for. So I need to create a div with a class of cursor and um, just apply that to the site. And then we can kind of style it how we want. I'll do 26 pixels for the width, 26 pixels for the height. Um, it needs to be set to position absolute and don't anchor it to any corners. And then we'll give it some sort of z-index, that way it's uh, above whatever we want it to be above. Um, you can style this one how you'd like, but I'm going to give it a radius of 50% to round it off and a background color. And that is looking pretty good for my cursor. So I'll go ahead and publish this and we can kind of see what's happening on the live site. So on the site, uh, when I hover, it's definitely following my mouse. Whenever I leave the page, it disappears and it reappears with the opacity. And then whenever I go over to a link block, it just snaps to the center of that link block. But um, it's very snappy, it's not very smooth. So we can set how much we want it to lag and how smooth we want it to be with transitions on that cursor class. So I'll go over to the transitions panel and it's being moved with the position uh, feature with top and with left. So I need to make sure whatever speed I apply, I apply these to both. And so I'll apply this to top and don't set any sort of easing because it can get choppy. Make sure your easing is set to linear. Um, and then um, for the second transition, we need to do the same thing, but this time apply it to left. And again, we're going to make sure that we don't set any easing on that. So this is at 200 milliseconds. We can increase it or decrease it if we'd like to get the feel just right but let's let's uh, test this out so now it's lagging a lot more and whenever I hover over to the corner of a link block you'll see it slides into the center and just stays in the center anytime I move around that link block um, so that's working just how we want now whenever we're hovering it's still snapping out of view instead of fading so I'm gonna add another transition and this time to opacity and this one can have an ease and this one will fade um, so we can also make the cursor look different. Now it's working, yeah. We can make the cursor look different whenever we hover over something. We can change the look of it. And we can also change the look of it anytime we click down on something. So to do that, if we go over to our code, you'll see add a class on hover. It's adding this class of cursor hover. So I can create a combo class in Webflow called cursor hover, style it how I want, and then I can make it look different. Um, also, it's adding a class of cursor press whenever we press down on something. So if I were to, for instance, add this combo class cursor pressed, I can change the, maybe I'll change the size of it to something like, I don't know, 8 pixels and 8 pixels. Make it really tiny. So that's what's going to happen anytime I press down. And I need to remove this combo class before publishing. That way my cursor looks the way it's supposed to look. Um, and then on the live site now, my cursor is default, I uh, move out, it fades out. Whenever I press down and hold, it, uh, it sort of jumps down to this size. Now again, it's really choppy, so you can add a transition and this time apply it to um, apply it to the width and also to the height since that's the properties we adjust it. And once we have that set, uh, back on the live site now, we'll refresh and now it scales down instead of snapping down. So that is perfect. So what if we want a custom look and feel depending on what we hover over? Like maybe we want it to change just the logo to not snap to the center, but to do something else. So we could grab the class, which is logo, and then we can come over to our custom code. And then down here, we can copy this add class on hover and create a new hover state. This one will be on hover of logo, and we'll change what we're targeting from all links, which is that A, to a period to represent class and the word logo. And make sure to add that class to the hover out state as well, logo. And then we need to say whenever we hover onto the logo, we want to add a class. And we'll call that class logo hover. And on hover out, we want to remove the class of logo hover. And we'll save that. 
So now I'll create the combo class of logo uh, dash hover. And then we want to change the size of it. So for a width and height, I'm going to, oh, and that needs to be applied to the um, cursor. So we'll create the class logo dash hover. Width and height, we'll set to maybe 10 pixels by 10 pixels, something like that, maybe eight by eight. And then we can set its position to sort of offset it from the, um, from the logo. So I'll add a transform and this will be moved. So by default, it's in the center. I'll just move it over a little and I'll move it up just a, just a tad. And then let's go ahead and uh, publish this and let's see what it looks like. Um, so I actually need to remove that combo class, publish, and then we can test it out. So now on the live site, drag around, hover over to the logo, and it scales down and just snaps to that part of the logo, creating this kind of nice effect. Um, everywhere else, it's still snapping to the center of whatever I hover over. Even this link down here is snapping directly to the center of it. One more thing, if we want it to create a custom image, like say anytime we hover over this video, we want it to maybe make an arrow appear or something, we could do this. So we'll create another hover state one more time. This time we hover uh, over the class of video. And then this time we'll change the uh, class it's going to add, the combo class, to video hover instead of logo hover. So then we can go over to the cursor, add a class of video hover. And then we can maybe give it some different styles, like maybe it's going to have a background image and the image would be this arrow, and it would be set to center, cover, or contain, no tile. Um, and then we can set our background to transparent. Maybe on this state, we wouldn't want any sort of radius, and then we'd increase the, um, the width and height quite a bit, like 80 pixels and 80 pixels, something like that. So now if I remove that combo class and publish, and I can go back over to the live site. So I can hover over these links and it snaps into place. I hover over the video and it creates this sort of arrow that's just following my cursor inside the video. I hover out, it turns back to a regular cursor. So um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. That's how to make a custom cursor that can change its state, that can snap to different links, all inside Webflow. Catch you next time.